I've received a lot of questions about the new YieldMax ETFs. They have a few different offerings, all based around popular individual stocks like Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Netflix, and Coinbase. And the funds themselves seem relatively simple. It takes, in this case, Apple, and it adds an option income overlay strategy on top of it. The fund's primary investment objective is current income with a secondary investment objective of exposure to the share price of the common stock of Apple. And this strategy currently has a distribution rate of a ridiculous 33%. And that right there is the main reason why these funds have been gaining so much attention lately. They seem to give you the best of both worlds, giving you exposure to popular, usually tech stocks like Apple, and somehow generating a ridiculously high dividend yield. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into these funds, see how they operate, and what exactly you're exposing yourself to. We have to begin with the official documents, and then we can move on to the more visually appealing charts. So beginning with the investment objective, as we saw before, primary objective is current income. Second is exposure to the share price of the common stock of Apple. Do note that this is actively managed and the management fee is a pretty substantial, just about 1%. Moving down a bit further on the page, we get to one of the most important things to understand. An investment in the fund is not an investment in Apple. This is key. As we go further down this document, we're gonna see exactly why it's the case. But as of right now, the fund strategy will cap its potential gains if Apple shares increase in value. And on the flip side, you are subject to all potential losses if Apple shares decrease in value. The fund does not invest directly in Apple, and therefore you are not entitled to any Apple dividends. Now, usually with a call strategy, you first own the asset, the share, the index, whatever it is, and then you proceed to sell call options on the asset that you own. That's why it's a covered call strategy. But when it comes to these funds, they have what's known as a synthetic covered call strategy. The synthetic covered call strategy that's implemented here is a little bit different. So he's still selling a call option, that part is the same. To achieve a synthetic long exposure to Apple, the fund will buy Apple call options so they're buying call options here and simultaneously sell Apple put options to try and replicate the price movements of Apple. These will generally have a six month to one year term and a strike price that are approximately equal to the then current share price of Apple. So to give you guys a visual, instead of just owning Apple stock and then proceeding with the very common covered call strategy, they are giving you this synthetic exposure via purchasing call options and selling put options. Both the put option and the purchased call option are at the money at the beginning of the term, meaning that it's equal to the current share price. And the way this works is say the share price goes to $90 per share, then you are obligated by the put option to relinquish the shares of Apple to the owner of the put option contract at the previously agreed upon price of $100, meaning that you realize all of this gain. You have a synthetic exposure to all of this downside. And it's a very similar thing in the other direction. If the price goes to $110 per share via the previously purchased call option, you have the right to purchase Apple at $110 per share giving you all of the difference as upside. So this is how synthetically you have exposure to all of the downside and upside price action of Apple without actually owning the share. So once they establish the synthetic exposure, the rest of the call option strategy is pretty run of the mill. So the fund sells call options on the synthetic exposure to Apple in order to generate that income. These options will generally have an expiration of one month or less and the strike price is approximately 5 to 15% above the current share price of Apple. So once you have the synthetic exposure to the stock, they then sell pretty normal call options that are 5 to 15% out of the money. And this is key to understand because just like with any covered call ETF or strategy out there, this is what dictates how much price appreciation you will have and thus the cap during bull markets. So to add on to this example down here, the current share price is $100. 
And let's say this call option we're selling is 5% out of the money. So we're selling a one month call option with a strike price of $105. By selling this call option, you are generated income. But if the price of Apple goes above the strike price 105, you are not entitled to any of those gains. You're capped at this figure for the duration of the contract. So if the price actually does go to $110 per share, you have to sell it at $105. That's why covered call strategies limit your upside and you still have exposure to all of the downside. But of course, the hope is the option income generated is enough to counteract this. And then the final thing you need to understand about this fund is that it holds U.S. Treasuries, and these act as collateral for these option contracts. And usually with call options, once the strike price is reached, you have to sell your shares to the owner of that contract at this price. But because we don't actually own the stock, you have to settle this in cash payments. And that's where the T-bills come into play. So if the price does indeed go up and reach the strike price, then we have to sell the T-bills and cover the call. And that is how these funds operate. You have synthetic exposure to 100% of the price movements of the underlying stock in both directions. Because the call options are sold five to 15% out of the money, we participate in gains up until that point. So we have capped price appreciation to the stock. We generate income by selling that call option. And third, because we have to keep money in T-bills to cover these call options, while the money is sitting here, it does generate some interest. And in terms of risk, the big one is that even though you have capped exposure to the upside of the stock synthetically, you have unlimited synthetic exposure to the downside of the stock. I also want to point out that the U.S. Treasuries this fund invests in are a bit longer maturity than I would have expected, six months to two years. If interest rates continue to go up, the value of existing bonds will decrease in value. For ticker TSLY, this is the yield max Tesla option income strategy ETF. The current dividend yield is a ridiculous 48%, but you should be aware that two factors are going to affect the amount of income this fund can generate. One is the level of volatility, which is measured by the VIX, and this applies to all option contracts. When the amount of volatility in the market increases, option premiums also go up, increasing the amount of income you generate by selling call options. But if we go through a period of low volatility, share prices aren't really moving that much, then the options will generate less income. And then the second factor here is those treasury bonds. Right now, the federal funds rate is over 5%, but in the future, if the yield on these bonds decreases, I would imagine that's going to have a noticeable impact on the yield here. I don't know the extent of that impact, I would say most of this income is certainly generated by the options, but considering these treasury notes make up over half of the fund, it's probably going to be a noticeable change once that rate eventually does dip. And this right here is the side-by-side -side total returns of TSLY against Tesla. The history is very limited, unfortunately, but we can deduct here that they do move in lockstep with one another. Again, you do have full exposure to the downside of the stock, and limited upside. It seems like because the call options are five to 15% out of the money and selling those call options generate another source of return, we do a decent job keeping pace with the underlying stock and recovering from dips, but long-term, that might be a different story. And if we go ahead and change this from the total return to just the price action, this is how it changes. So we can see that the part of the return from selling the call options is very significant. And without it, we have very limited amount of growth and the same downside potential. So I certainly think these are interesting funds. My main question is why do they go through the trouble of the synthetic exposure instead of just owning the underlying stock? That's where I'm confused. It seems like that adds unnecessary risk and potential unforeseen hazards in the future when they could just own the underlying stock and sell call options off of it and still even hold some treasuries if they wanna benefit from the high yields right now. But I know some of you guys watching this invest in these funds. So let us know in the comments below, why do you like or avoid these funds? I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.